Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to today's Caffeine for the Soul. Today we're going to be exploring what is our role in creating success? What's our role in making things happen in the world? How much of what happens is up and down to us, and how much of it is random, or a happy accident, or luck? And at the two extremes, there are, there are notions in the world. There is a notion that we should take 100% responsibility for everything that happens. And this is sort of at the heart of, of, of some of the extreme law of attraction teachings, that everything that happens from a, a, a car accident to a child in India to the success of the wealthiest man in the world uh, is all down to their thinking, all down to them. And I can't actively disprove that. In other words, I don't like the idea that it would work that way. I don't like the idea that my thoughts are so powerful that they are creating every bad thing in my life as well as everything good in my life. I don't see it as true, but I can't actively disprove it because it's non-disprovable. In other words, all somebody has to say is, well, yes, but at a deeper level, those are your thoughts, and, you know, okay, <laughs> there's nowhere to go with it. Now, here's the problem with it for me as a starting point, is if you think that everything that you think and do is responsible for everything that happens, and only responsible, like that is the only thing that is causal, then you have no choice but to become extremely self-conscious. And what I've seen is that none of us do well when we're extremely self-conscious. Nobody does better in the world by getting more up their own ass. Nobody does better in the world by thinking about their thinking more. So it would seem to me that whether or not at some cosmic level that is true, for all practical purposes, it's counterproductive to even go there. Now, the flip of that is that it's nothing to do with us. And at some extremes of fatalism and nihilism and even enlightened predeterminism, like the work of Ramesh S. Balsakar, who says that everything that you think and feel and do was written before you were even born. And so there's literally no point in doing anything or not doing anything because it's all been pre-written already. And so if that were the case, we have nothing to do with success. We're, we're puppets on a, on, on a string, we're, we're ghosts in the machine, we're, we're just doing what we were preordained to do, so you don't have to think about it. Now, funnily enough, that works better in practical terms. So again, non-disprovable, because how do you, do, how do you disprove that because, ah, oh, yes, but it was preordained that you would try to disprove that. So we've got to look at it and go, well, does it help? Funnily enough, because it takes us out of our heads, because it gets us to stop thinking so much about everything we do and weighing everything so heavily, we do more. And because we do more, we'll probably get more results. So in an odd way, positive fatalism <laughs> works pretty well as a, as a belief system, as a starting point for creating in the world, for creating success. Now, that doesn't make it true, though. And as you know, if you're a regular listener to these, I'm way more interested in what's true than just what apparently works. So let's see if we can get somewhere close to the truth. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to share what I see, and I'll ask you to look for yourself and see what you see. And if you want to comment, we're using the uh, Inside Out community on Facebook as a sort of a place to explore and comment on these, on these podcasts at the moment. So it seems to me that most results that I achieve in life aren't up to me but they're not not up to me. And here's what I mean. So I used to think, for example, that writing 
was completely up to me. I would either write or I wouldn't. And, you know, nothing outside could stop me. I, you know, it was a choice, and I could either write or I, or, or I wouldn't. But I noticed that if I sit down to write, no matter how many times I sit down to write, if I can't find inspiration, if I can't tap into that deeper creativity in me, I may as well not be writing. Yes, nothing can stop me from tapping my fingers on keys. But whether or not I write anything worth reading, there's something beyond me that plays into it, or there is a deeper part of me that is outside of my direct control, at the very least, that impacts that, that either allows great writing to flow forth from me or not. So it's, it's not up to me in the sense that I can't make great writing, successful writing, impactful writing flow from my fingertips as an act of will, but it's not not up to me. It happens a hell of a lot more often when I'm sitting at my keyboard than when I'm not. It happens a hell of a lot more often when I carry a notebook around with me than when I don't. Right? See, it's not up to me, but it's not not up to me. I think of, of getting a suntan. Right? You can't will yourself to tan, but... <laughs> If you stand in the sun and look towards the sun, you're more likely to tan because that's kind of how it works. So it's not up to you, but it's not not up to you. I mean, you're involved in the process. It's not going to happen without you. Now, I'll give you a flip. So for me, writing was something I thought, well, no, that's 100% me. Well, I used to think that making money was nothing to do with me. It either happened or it didn't. Well, you know, if it, you know, if they people want to come on a course, they'll come on a course. Nothing I can do about it. You know, well, I mean, you know, if if uh, if a, a great idea happens to land in my lap, I'll I'll put it out there. But if it doesn't land in my lap, I got nothing. And it really looked that way to me. Like there was no point in even trying anything because it was either going to happen or it wasn't. Well, at some point it dawned on me that that was just as ridiculous as the idea that I could make myself write. So again, with writing, I could show up to the keyboard, but I couldn't make great writing appear. Well, with with money, I wasn't even showing up to the keyboard. I, I hadn't realized, I thought that was completely in the hands of the gods. And so I started to look at, well, what is showing up to the keyboard for me with money? And a lot of it was just being open to the idea that there might be things I could do that might tilt the odds in my favor, like talking to more people. Go figure. The more people I talk to about what I do, the more people want to be take part in it. You know, go figure. <laughs> the, 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 more, the more I talk to people, the, the, the more nuanced my descriptions of what I do get. The more I listen to people, the more I can hear what it is that they would value and need. The more I engage with the whole process, the more fresh ideas come to me about how I could better serve people. And suddenly, wow, we're making money. Well, it's still not up to me. Because I could do that till the cows come home and nobody would buy for whatever reason. But the truth is, the more I engage with the process, the more things unfold. So that's my basic premise. The only thing that I can say as true is that it's not up to me, it's not up to you whether or not you succeed in the sense that you can't make it happen through will. But it's not not up to you. Your involvement, your engagement, your creativity have a huge impact on what happens and what doesn't. Literally, your involvement and engagement, your willingness to show up and respond to what shows up, tilts the odds in your favor. So while I can't make myself suntan, when I stand in the sun, it tilts the odds in my favor. I can't make great writing happen, but showing up to the keyboard tilts the odds in my favor. I can't just make money, but showing up and engaging with people and seeing how I can serve them and getting creative with that, well, that brings about more money. So have a look for yourself. See what you see. Share what you see at the Inside Out community on Facebook. And until next time, have fun, learn heaps, and I'll talk to you soon.